اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین الصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد وعلى آله الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المنتجبین الہدات المہدیین لا سیما بقیت اللہ فی الارضین روحی و ارواح العالمین فی مقدمه الفدا ولعنت الدائمت على اعدائهم مجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد فقط قال اللہ سبحانه و تعالی فی محکم الكتاب المبین وهو استق الصادقین و قوله الحق بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ صدق الله العلي العظيم Dear respected viewers, brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the fourth episode of Ethical Values where in which every single topic uh, every single episode we discuss various topics in regards to our ethical values our characteristics our manners how we should engage with other people how we should engage with our family members how we should engage with ourselves the manners that we need to adopt for example the manners when you are sitting down the manners where you are talking to someone else the manners that you uh, the way you sleep, for example, the way you walk, for example, these are all ethical values that one should uh, assist within himself first and then implement it with other people. <coughs> the previous programs were about raising your status in the way of Allah, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One, uh, controlling your nafs was another. Building and climbing the ladder to the level of Iman, to the level of piety. And we all discussed, um, we discussed the ways of how to do this, discussed the ways uh, when should a person start um, performing these actions. Today's topic, inshallah, we will be talking about repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in other words, tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in Surah An-Nur verse number 31 has stated And beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, O believers, so that you may be successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly stating to us at this moment of time that the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of us. When we have the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of us, we have the ayat in front of us. Yes? When we have the ayat in front of us, either we know Arabic or we don't know Arabic. When we know Arabic, we understand the meaning of the Holy Quran. If we do not know the meaning of the context, if we do not know the meaning of the, uh, the text of the Holy Quran, we refer to the translation. When we look at the translation of the Holy Quran, we tend to understand 60-70% of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us. In order to understand, uh, let's say, 80% or 90% or 100% for some for various uh, verses from the Holy Quran, we refer to the commentary of the Holy Quran, where in which our dear scholars have spent their years and spent their lives in understanding the Holy Quran and giving that knowledge to us. So in order to understand the Quran, we either... Read the Quran to understand it, it's not gonna come to us just like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to for us human beings to achieve a status in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes, we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking for tawbah, because every single person, you and I Every single person who is not masoom either sins, commits sins, forgets. So we have to understand that we are human beings. We do forget. We do sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to do what? To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawbah. To ask him for forgiveness. And when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, he will 
reply back to you, respond back to you with ultimate uh, blessings and in order for you to um, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a few stages in this process. First of all, like I explained before, Tawbah basically means to repent, or ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness from the sins that you have committed um, in, uh, in your lifetime. Now, like for every single thing, there is a process that you have to go into. Tawbah, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Tawbah, there is, a, there is a process that you go to. Firstly, number one, that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes. Firstly, you recognize your sin. When you recognize your sin or when you recognize the mistakes that you have, the, the mistakes that you have done, then you will realize that you went against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, you feel ashamed of violating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights, his submission, because you are submissive to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, so secondly, you are violating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command here, which is submission to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, making, this is what you have to do, the process in which you attain tawbah. Thirdly, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you do not repeat that sin again. So you do not make the same mistake again. If it is unintentional, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. But if it is intentional, even then, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you committed that same sin 10 times and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, Ten times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is merciful, because he is compassionate, because he has he is all knowing, he will forgive you. But there is a difference here. Those who commit the sin once and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and do not repeat that again, it is called a sincere uh, forgiving. Secondly, if you look at the second person. The same person is committing the sin over and over again, or repenting over and over again, making the same mistake again and again, and are still asking for forgiveness again and again. Even then, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. But there is, you see the difference between two people. If, for example, <clears throat> out of these three stages, these three processes, if one is not done, then your forgive, forgiveness or your repenting or your toba is not sincere anymore. Why? Because you are not, firstly, if you do not recognize your mistake, then how will you be able to ask for forgiveness? <clears throat> Secondly, if you are violating the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to recognize that. You have to know because there is always an haram and a halal and uh, uh, something which is wajib and something which is forbidden. Secondly, thirdly, if you do not promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will not do it again, it's not sincere anymore. Why? Because you have that conscious back of your mind saying that, okay, if I ask for forgiveness, I know that I will make the same mistake again. So, dear brothers and sisters, the process that we have to go through has to be intact with our intentions. When our intentions is focused solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always and always from our hearts, from the deepest of our hearts, sincerely that, O oh Allah, forgive us for this act that I have committed, this guna that I have done, this sin that I have committed. So when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He indeed is all forgiving. Another key point that we need to understand is that there are two types of rights. There is Haqqullah and there is Haqqul Nas. If we take, for example, Haqqullah, what do I mean by Haqqullah? The rights towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do I mean by this? I mean that everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told a human being or a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do, he should obey it. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you not to do, then you should obey and stay away from that. 
For example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now Allah has himself has stated aqimu salat that pray. When you pray that you are abiding by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command here. If you do not pray for let's say 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, you do not pray. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will ask you, why did you not pray? When I told you specifically, pray in your lifetime. Your, your mission in the dunya was to obey me. Why did you not do that? If that person, for example, has um, a valid excuse or let's say a valid reason for his not ibadah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive him. In the same way, let's say if the person has not paid khums, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive him. This is called haqqullah. On the other hand, when we look at haqqul nas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you about con concerning haqqul nas. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you have taken the right away from another human being. For example, what do I mean? I mean that, for example, if you have backbited about the other person, you are taking his right away. You are backbited about that person. You have, for example, taken a loan from him. You have borrowed money from him. You have taken his property. You have taken his money, but you are not giving his money back. This is called haqqun nas. You have backbited about this person. And you have not told him, this is called haqqun nas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will say to you, I will not forgive you for them actions. The only person that can forgive you is that person you backbited about. Is the person that you borrowed the money from. Is the property that you took it from him. So you have to ask the person in order to be forgiven. In order ultimately that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. So there's a difference. If haqqun nas is portrayed in this process, then we add it to the fourth category. That we pay back or we give or we send or we tell or convey the message that, oh yeah, I have backbited about you, I ask for forgiveness from you. So then we are on the straight path. This is called haqqun nas. Surah An-Nur verse number 31 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us to stay on the path of Allah because ultimately there are no two paths of Allah. No, there is only one path and there is only one ending. If you take the second path as the path of shaitan, what do we read every single day in our prayer in Surah Al-Fatiha? That oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right path, that path. Which is that path? اِهْدِنَا الصَّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صَرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَالْنَظَامِ There's only one direction. That direction is of the Salihin, not of the Dalin, the people that go astray. So we understand here that in many verses from the Holy Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically tells us and teaches us to stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... We should always and always, when we stay on the path of Allah, always note that when we stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are consciously accepting, accepting the bounties of Allah. What do I mean? Allah always and always gives us bounties even if we sin. Yes, because why? Because He is all merciful and His, His, His bounties and His blessings are bestowed upon the human being. Consciously, everything is given to us. Wealth is given to you, children is given to you, everything is given to you, blessings are given to you, everything is given to you consciously. But when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and we stand on the way of Allah and we go on the way of Allah, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are assured and guaranteed that that blessing or that bounty or that mercy in this dunya will be ad 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 adhered to us in this dunya and the hereafter. Not only this dunya. For those who are attaining wealth in this dunya, who have mansions, who have castles, who have wealth, they, alhamdulillah, they are 
doing their own bit in this dunya. But if they are not sincere in their prayers, if they're not sincere in their a'mal, if they're not sincere in their um, uh, deeds, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only give them blessings in this dunya. If they don't look at the orphans, if they don't look at the uh, the people in need, if they turn their blind eye to those who are widowed, to those who are uh, who are needy, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only give them blessings. This dunya, um, it doesn't last long. They will only have the luxurious life in this dunya. But in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say that, I gave you everything in the dunya. Why did you not look after the orphans? Why did you not look after the people in need? Why did you not look after the widowed? Why did you not look after the deceased? So, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Repentance, therefore, paves the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace in this life and the hereafter. Allah promises us wealth, children, endless blessings in Surah Al-Hud as He promises in verse number 3. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَإِنِ اسْتَغْفَرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ يُمَتِّعَكُمْ مَتَاعًا حَسَنًا إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ وَيُؤْتِ كُلَّ ذِي فَضْلٍ فَضْلَهِ if you as a human being, if you as a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, sincere forgiveness, then he will bestow his endless bounties upon you, hasanan. And then, ila ajalin musamma. Everything that he has, every blessing that he will bestow upon you. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek the forgiveness of your Lord and turn to Him in repentance that He may grant you good enjoyment for a term appointed and bestow His abandoning to every owner of grace. Allah tells us in the Holy Quran many times, many, many times. Also, there is, um, uh, there is also um, confirmation by the Holy Quran when Hazrat who oh, the salam told his people, Ya Qom, is Safaru Rabbakum Summa Tubu Elehi Yursal Sama Alekum Midrara, or is it Kum Kuwat Ela Kuwatikum, Walla Tatawal Low Mujrimin? That, O oh my people, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and then repent to Him. He will send you from the skies abundant rain and add strength to strength. So do not turn away from him as criminals, as evildoers. We have this understanding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is our creator, yes. He is our Lord, yes. He is the Almighty, yes. But when we commit a sin, that ideology that we had, why does it not flash back in front of us? And he is watching our every move. Every single thing that we do in our lives, he is watching us. Small, big, hidden, public, every single thing that we do, if it is a good deed, he tells, he is, it, it is written. If it is a bad deed, it is also written. Allah has given us an opportunity in this dunya to ask for forgiveness and which other month is better than the holy month of Ramadan to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness? When asked by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the best a'mal for this holy month of Ramadan? al an maharim al To stay away from the bad things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited you to do. So stay away from the things which are unlawful. Stay away from the things that are haram. Stay away from making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not happy. So when we go towards goodness, when we go towards uh, uh, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately is happy with you. And He bestows and He promises you, as the ayah says, He promises you wealth, He promises you children, He promises you bounties and blessing endless, endlessly. So you understand there are a few, uh, there are things that we make in our lives that are 
that or that create a realm for us to take or let's say to stay away from Allah subhanahu no we should not we should have that connection we should have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we always and always obey him always and always look upon him always and always have hope in him do not be those people that only have hope when you are sick and vulnerable no or say, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am sick, I am ill, I cannot move, I am this, I am disabled, I am this. That is not the time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is always there. You are always in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are happy, why do you not remember Allah then? When you are enjoying yourself, why do you not remember Allah then? Why is it only when you are vulnerable and when you are sick that you remember Allah? This is not the way to go forward. The path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always, if you are on the path, then you don't look left or you don't look right. You look straight. There's a few um, benefits of a person who asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Firstly, Tawbah keeps us away from hardship and trials. When we know that our sins that we have committed haunt us in this dunya and the next. What do I mean? I mean, if you have committed a sin in this dunya, it will all will be always be at the back of your head. It will it will always haunt you by saying you have committed that sin. If you do not ask for repentance, then that will always be at the back of your mind. On the day of judgment, if you have not asked ask, uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa taala for forgiveness, then you will be questioned and you will be punished for that action that you did. So it will haunt you in this dunya and in the hereafter. The more sins that we commit, the more we are deprived by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Repentance therefore can provide us a way out of our miseries because once a person is following the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then his troubles and miseries are lessened. أَوَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّهُمْ يُفْتَنُونَ فِي كُلِّ عَامٍ مَرَّةٍ أَوْ مَرَّتَيْنَ ثُمَّ لَا يَتُوبُونَ وَلَا هُمْ يَزَّكَّرُونَ In Surah Tawbah, verse number 126, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly states to do they not see that they are trialed every year once or twice, but they do not repent and nor do they remember? Very powerful hadith, uh, very powerful um, verse from the Holy Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, you are being trialed, you are being tested once or twice every year, but if you do not come out victorious, then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? You do not repent. And you forget about the sin that you have committed. When you're alive, for example, you have committed a sin at the age of, so let's say, 20. If you do not repent that for that sin, you reach the age of 40, let's say, 20 years later, you'll forget about the sin. You'll forget, oh yeah, I did this uh, 20 years ago. When you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, you'll know that you had, you had committed that sin. So our duty in this life is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tawbah. And the best time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawbah is being alone on the prayer mat at the time after the time of Fajr prayers. And sitting down and talking to your Lord sincerely. This is the best. And this, they ask what is the best position or what is the best type of uh, tawbah the best type of tawbah is when you are in sujood when you're talking when you're dropping down onto the ground and no one else is there you ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness that is the best method of asking secondly tawbah helps us clear our mind and our conscience Sins are always associated with an accompanying sense of guilt that you have lodged into your heart. So, every sin that you commit, you will be guilty about it. Because you'll know it's a sin. If you're Muslim, 
you'll know that this sin that you have committed it against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order for me to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, I have to do tawbah. If I do not do tawbah, if I do not repent, then you will be guilty. Your, your heart will be guilty that you have committed and you have gone against the will of Allah. The second point that I mentioned in the beginning of my talk, second point, is that you have, you violated the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here. So we try sometimes when we commit sin after sin, um, guna after guna, we try and brush it off with something or we try and um, turn a blind eye to it. We should not do that. That guilty feeling slowly, slowly starts to chip away the happiness that you have in your uh, life. Toba will naturally removes Tawbah naturally removes the guilty conscience and clears your mind because you are only and only 100% focused in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, Tawbah pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Quran itself states, Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin wa yuhibbu al-mutatahirin. Notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the level of Tawbah, the level of repentance before the level of purity. Because in order for you to purify yourself, you have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So Allah loves those who turn to Him and those who turn to repent, those who also purify themselves. Because as a person is going through a stage to purify himself, he has to, in order to reach that level of piety, reach that level of Iman, ultimately reach the level of Yaqeen, he needs to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his sins that he have committed. Fourthly, Tawbah is life transformational process. What do I mean? Requires not just to abandon the life that you had previously. For example, the life that you had was to uh, sin all the time. You made a pattern of sinning. You did everything in order to sin. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Tawbah, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Tawbah, you, your bad habits, your pattern of life will change and it will transform into goodness. You will realize it. People who want to try this, try it. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fifthly, Tawbah makes our du'as more responsive and worthy of respond. Because like I said before, that there are different times that you should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's different positions that you have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. But, but, there are a few people in this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to their du'as more, re responds to their du'as more. For example, people in need, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to their du'a more. People who are orphans, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to their du'as more. People who prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sujood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them or responds to their du'as more. Travelers, Allah responds to their du'as more. People who have been oppressed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to their du'as more. So we know and we keep on uh, evaluating the situations in our life and we find that everything that we do goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This becomes, when we do this, when we perform the action of tawbah, it becomes part of our life. So every single time that you commit a sin, you will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And ultimately, when you ask Tawbah, when you ask for forgiveness, you will be automatically in the state of humility and at the same time you will be humble for your deeds. We have a quest, um, call on the line. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum as wa um, I'm on live, brother. Yes, yes, you're on live. Um, I, uh, can you ask uh, Mulana to do dua for me for to get a job and for Rizak? Inshallah, inshallah, no problem. Thank you very much. Mulana, please do dua for my house and my family for job and stuff. Inshallah, inshallah. 
So dear brother, brother just called in, uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise your status in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes and for him to attain the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya and hereafter his job, his uh, wealth is very important in order to provide for the family, in order to provide for himself, in order to um, attain the um, uh, desires that you have in this dunya. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you, for everyone. We pray to everyone. We pray for everyone in order to stay on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I explained, dear brothers and sisters, when you want to take yourselves out of these, these miseries, of the dunya miseries, these worldly miseries, then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawbah. Forgive. To, ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the best and the most important thing that we can do at the moment. Because every single human being in the beginning of my talk, every single human being in this dunya commits a sin. Whether it be small, whether it be big, whether it be minor, whether it be major. Every single person, there are not no one in this dunya, human beings, except for the infallibles and the Holy Prophet wasallam. No one is ma'asum. So we do commit guna, we do commit sin, we do forget. We do call other people's name unconsciously, un intentionally yet it is a sin we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness in this dunya and elevate our ranks in the hereafter uh, until next time we'll come back with a different topic a more um, inter interactive topic inshallah uh, until then wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh